But there are criticisms and questions in decompressive craniectomy. Are we accomplishing anything with decompressive craniectomy? Are we reducing mortality at the expense of increasing incidence of severe disability in a vegetative state? And in the ideal world, as I've mentioned, we really want to have everybody who has suffered from a TBI to go back to their previous level of function. But the problem is, is we really haven't found a magic bullet in order to have that happen. There have been numerous drug trials and hypothermia and other interventions, but nobody has found that they've been very helpful. Um, so what are the reasons for that? And we might explore a little bit later some of the reasons why we've had these negative trials. And decompressive craniectomy has now been subject to uh, some randomized controlled trials. It is in the current armamentarium of how we treat severe traumatic brain injury. We have ICP monitoring and oxygen monitoring and hyperosmolar therapy, giving mannitol or hypertonic saline, barbiturates or hypothermia, and then decompressive craniectomy is certainly there. I think there's a lot of practitioners that would prefer to take off skull than to have patients undergo uh, barbiturate coma because that's a very intensive therapy. It requires one-to-one -one nursing and it, it requires meticulous management and a decompressive craniectomy might simplify the management significantly. So the first decompressive craniectomy randomized trial was in Australia by Taylor et al. And this was published in 2001, and it was a small group of 27 children. And basically, um, they did bitemporal craniectomies. They didn't open the dura, as you uh, have, might notice in this, in this uh, picture here. The dura is open and the brain is exposed. If we open the dura, that actually helps reduce ICP more. But they didn't do it. And they found that they actually had pretty good outcomes, uh, 54 uh, percent uh, of good outcomes in these kids versus 14. Again, it's a very small number. And that there was significant ICP reduction, even despite the fact that they didn't open the dura. There was a Cochrane review in 2006 that said due to the lack of randomized controlled trials, they really couldn't recommend decompressive craniectomy. But they did uh, note that Taylor uh, lends conclusions that this would be beneficial in pediatric patients. So before the randomized control trials came out, there were important questions. At what stage do we perform decompressive craniectomy? Do we perform it at the initial operation for mass lesions when swelling is encountered or anticipated, or as a third tier therapy when all other therapies fail, or as a second tier therapy when initial measures were not effective, and would you rather use hypothermia or barbiturates first rather than taking off the skull, which we just spoke about. So these are the two major randomized control trials that have been performed since the Taylor trial, and DEPRA was early decompressive craniectomy in patients with severe traumatic brain injury, and rescue ICP was the randomized evaluation of surgery with craniectomy for uncontrolled ICP. And there was a big difference in these two studies, and it's very important. There was fewer patients in DEFRA because all the patients had diffuse injury. They did not have any uh, hematomas or anything that had to be evacuated, and they underwent bifrontal craniectomy. So, Rescue ICP had more patients, 400 patients. So already there's a difference between these two trials. The craniectomy patients in DECRA uh, were craniectomized when the ICP was greater than 20 for 15 minutes in one hour. And they, they failed sedation an external ventricular drain and normocapnia and mannitol. In standard care, they underwent a lot of tiers, uh, therapy, mannitol, which is hyperosmolar, it's a diuretic, and uh, normocapnia means that the PCO2 was stayed normal. And then they would give hypothermia or barbiturates. And they did permit a decompressive craniectomy after 72 hours, 15 patients total 
actually crossed over to decompressive craniectomy. Uh, the problem was is that in the decompressive craniectomy group, there was a higher incidence of fixed pupils. So the two groups were not essentially equivalent um, uh, in their characteristics. And that uh, is argued that if you have fixed pupils, you have a higher degree of brainstem injury. So for decompressive craniectomy, um, uh, the ICPs were lower than the standard of care, 14 millimeters instead of 19, and they did require fewer interventions. The ICU length of stay was less, the ventilator days were less, and the mortality was 19% as opposed to the mortality of 80%. So the mortality did not change, but it did improve the number of ICU days and ventilator days. Um, and there was a higher, unfortunately, unfavorable um, outcome at six months uh, for the decompressive craniectomy and standard care group. However, if you adjusted for the pupils, that uh, significance didn't, was ultimately not statistically significant. So the conclusions in this trial is that decompressive craniectomy decreased ICP and ICU length of stay in patients with ICP refractory to first tier therapy and decompressive craniectomy resulted in significantly worse outcomes at six months. Six months outcome. So for New England Journal of Medicine, because their primary outcome measure was six months, they concluded that decompressive craniectomy was associated with more unfavorable outcomes. Not regarding the fact that if you adjusted for the difference in pupillary reaction, that that uh, unfavorable outcome rate was not statistically significant for decompressive craniectomy. And they, they mentioned somewhere in like an appendix to this uh, paper, that there was a 12 month outcome group, but certainly that 12 month outcome was not part of this original presentation, uh, uh, publication. So the fact is for DECRA, there was a big uproar. It, 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 it was criticized a lot because people had a lot of, of thoughts about how this was conducted and what the outcome was because we as neurosurgeons have seen a lot of patients get better with decompressive craniectomies and certainly uh, there have been that haven't gotten better. And so this is the first randomized controlled trial that came out and was essentially a negative or possible a, a negative study or there was possible some detriment to the treatment arm, which was decompressive craniectomy. The ICP threshold for decompressive craniectomy was probably too low. You know, all you had to have was an ICP of 20 for 15 minutes, and then you would just get a, a operation, which is not necessarily the case in uh, what we do in real life. We don't use an ICP of 20 as the lower limit of threshold when we're entertaining decompressive craniectomies. Often we'll wait for a higher uh, ICP and threshold. And then we get more bilaterally fixed pupils in the decompressive craniectomy group. So when they analyzed non-DECRA patients in Australia, they actually found of the same group, the people that were actually rejected from the DECRA trial, they found that the mortality rate among the decompressive craniectomy group there was 18.4% with a 54% favorable outcome rate. So Here's a sample of a decompressive craniectomy population that didn't make the DECRA trial, but had a better outcome than was reported in the DECRA trial. The take home message to the DECRA trial is that bifrontal craniectomy in patients with diffuse injury likely has no advantage over continuous medical management early in the post-injury uh, period when you're looking at six month outcome. That's really the take home message. Not much more than that. Don't use 20 of, as your ICP threshold and continue medical management. Now, what was important is that the six month outcome has been shown that there's been recovery in severe traumatic injury up to 18 to 24 months. And this 
Ho et al, who's also from Australia, and this is where the DECRA trial originated from, is that uh, the improvements continue. And therefore, it could be argued that six-month outcome is no too short a period of time to judge the success of an operation. So in 2016, we had the results of the guidelines for the management of severe traumatic brain injury. This was now the fourth edition. And decompressive craniectomy was a new chapter in these guidelines from the Brain Trauma Foundation. As a matter of disclosure, I was one of the co-authors. And basically, what I just told you was what we basically said in the recommendations, that bifrontal decompressive craniectomy is not recommended to improve outcomes at six months post-injury in patients with diffuse injury, especially when you're using values of 20 millimeters of mercury from uh, uh, more than 15 minutes, okay? So we really feel that continuing medical management is better. However, a large frontotemporal parietal decompressive craniectomy, if you are going to do one, and it's a heavy craniectomy, um, would actually reduce mortality and improve neurological outcomes in patients with severe TBI. And I won't go over this in detail, but you could see this um, on uh, if you go back to the recording, uh, that it was based upon a couple of studies where they had a fair number of patients where they compared larger craniectomies to limited craniectomies and found that the uh, outcomes in the GOS is the Glasgow outcome score of four to five, which is a good outcome. Um, uh, said, uh, so that means that you have a, uh, you're got a moderate disability to uh, almost no disability. And that was improved over limited craniectomies and that was statistically significant. And the mortality rate was also improved in patients with larger craniectomies. And this was another study from Q, um, were randomized controlled trial of 74 patients and showing that patients who underwent large craniectomy had a significantly better functional outcome than patients who had a smaller craniectomy. However, the patients with larger craniectomies did have um, a higher incidence of delayed intracranial hematomas and uh, subdural effusions, or what we call hygromas of CSF collections around the brain. This is the rescue ICP. For those of you who tuned in last week, uh, we did discuss this in, uh, in fair detail, uh, but the inclusion uh, criteria, uh, we have, um, uh, uh, basically mostly adults with some children and an N of about 400 um, and with an abnormal CT. However, the difference is that the ICP was greater than 25 for less than 1 to 12 hours. Okay, so a higher ICP threshold. And you really had to undergo um, a couple of tiers of treatment before you decided you were going to do a decompressive craniectomy. And this is the results. Now this particular... Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.